there's times I even had to tell him, like, bro, you you playing like you can't be replaced. Mm. You know what I'm saying, bro? You practicing like it's nobody else that want to take your job. And, and in essence, it is true because a lot of times I fire him or the coach will fire him, and three plays later I got to rehire you because right. you don't got nobody else. <laughs> right, exactly. You know, so I always tell him, like, I got to create situations for you to not get mm -hmm. comfortable because if you're comfortable, you're going to become complacent. Again on the Listen to Low show, and you are listening to Low. And like I said, two ears, one mouth. Make sure you listen to Low, cause you never know what Low might say. You gotta listen all times with two ears, one mouth. And we always talk about magic, right? Making magic. Talking about magicians, right? Everybody want the magic, but you don't want to do the work. You have to do the work to be rewarded. A magician go pull out a hat, bring a rabbit, pull out the hat, and there you go. But was that really a lot of work? Or was that magic? What type of work you gonna do to make the magic come real, right? How you gonna make the reality, right, become a dream or a dream become a reality? You have to make sure that if you are gonna be a magician, you have to practice, you have to prepare, and you have to do the work. Hard work equals fun, but there's no fun in losing. Well, you know what? I have a winner today. I have a winner in the studio today because I'm a winner. I know I'm a winner because every morning I wake up, I tell myself, I'm a winner. I'm the best. I'm the man. I'm the greatest. If you don't tell yourself you're the greatest, who will? If you don't wake up and say, I got this covered, who will? If you don't go into every obstacle, prepare to win and try to beat that obstacle, you're going to fail. Let's make magic today. And my guest going to make some magic. I already see it going to happen. I can see it right now, right? When you fly to Las Vegas, you land, you go to the big hotel, and they got all the guys on stage, right? And they make it magic. There are magicians everywhere. Well, you know what? One day, this young man going to be on stage. But he can't do it by himself. You can't do nothing by yourself. You all got to have some support. Got to have that backbone, that person behind him. Now, some people call it a backbone. My granddaddy called it a gristle. I said, Daddy, what if granddad, what is a gristle? I mean, I remember he's going to go in the backyard, boy, and, 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 and mow that yard and pick up them watermelons. I said, I got this right here. And I went out there, but I'm throwing watermelon. I'm throwing Jubilee. They called me Jubilee because it was so big. And I'm like, Granddad, my back hurts. I said, boy, you ain't got no back. You got a gristle. When you grow up and you get stronger and you become that man, then you get a gristle. Nope, you get a backbone. Hey, the bone is always what we got. All about have a strong backbone, and I think he got a backbone right here too. So I'm gonna tell you about the backbone. I'm gonna tell you about the young man who's gonna grow up and make some magic right now in our studio on the Listen Low show. We do have Mr. Braylon K. Senior, and we have Braylon K. Junior, aka BJ. <laughs> What's going on, boys? Not much. Oh man, I'm glad to have y'all guys on the show. It's exciting. It's actually the first time the listening low had a father-son combination on the show with the exact same name. <laughs> I'm serious, right? I love it. I you love know it. they say your name is all you got. That's right. I remember mean, forget when my uh my, my son mother was like, Yeah, I'm gonna name him after you. I said, You is? You gonna name him Low Wood Jr.? I was so excited to have my own junior, right? I mean, somebody going to keep that legacy going or uh, keep that name going, right? right? But you want that name to be a good name. We want a name that when they come back and say, yes, yep, that low son right there. Or now, that's BJ. That's right. Right? That's big BJ son, right. right? That big BJ, the little BJ, right? Right? Yes, right? So we want to make sure they recognize that he came up the right way. Right, built from that cloth, right? Yes, sir. And that's what it's all about. So I want to get right into it. BJ. Yes, sir. How you doing? I'm good, Coach. How are you? Oh, man, I'm doing so good right now. I mean, I'm just so excited to have you on the show, right? Because I think a lot of young men going to recognize that if you do it the right way, with the right support, the possibility is unlimited. I yes, mean, sir. anything can happen. Will you agree? Yes, sir. Right, you've been working hard, right? Yes, sir. A lot of hard work. Before I even get into what we're going to talk about, I need to know why. Why do BJ, a.k.a. B-Max now, we're going to roll to the B-Max in a minute. Why? Why you work so hard? Because I have a dream to, uh, dream to chase. Mm. Yes, sir. What's that dream? 
make it to the NFL and be one of the greatest. Oh, so you got that dream that a lot of young men have out there, right? The dream, right? And I do have this quote say, the NFL's a dream, right? But a college degree is reality. Yes, sir. Right? So you have the dream to get there. What are you doing to make that dream come true? Making sure I stay in class, stay in school, do what I'm supposed to do in school, and make sure I have good grades and work hard outside of school to mm. achieve that goal. So we're talking about greatness in school, greatness on the field, greatness in the game, right? All that right there is all tied in to make that dream come true. Yes, sir. You know, I had a, a gentleman on the show uh, on the uh, last episode with Brandon Meatherweather, and he, <laughs> man, he made a lot of dreams come true. Yes, sir. I was talking reality, but he went through a lot of ups and downs too, right? But yes, even if you heard the show, he had a lot of support, a lot of support. So, Dad, let's talk about this. Yes, the sir. support for his dream. What is your support for his dream? For me, uh, and it's with my wife, too. She's uh, over there in the corner. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, honestly, I ask him every day. Every chance I get, I text him, hey, is this what you love to do? Mm. Do you want to do this? Mm -hmm. Are you having fun doing this? Because a lot of times it starts, I'll be honest, as a father, right? You, I play and most dads, if they're honest, they'll tell you, I put my son in football because I played it. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And I'll be honest, that's where it started. Like, I can't wait to have a son. Hey, he's going to be a football player. He's going to be everything that I wasn't. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Right. I'm going to do everything that I wish I could have done. I'm going to try to give him those opportunities. And, and, uh, and, of course, that's where it started at. But as a father, and I'll be honest, I, I realized this probably a couple years ago. I was at uh, one of his games, and I – the passion in me came out, and I was so adamant at him about mistakes. And then God just told me, do you really think he want to make a mistake? Do you really think he want to let you down? And it changed my perspective of how I coached him, how I trained with him. Now it's, it's more of it's a partnership. Hey, this is what, what you got to do. I text him, hey, bro, this, you got to fix this. this got, we got to be better. Now, remember... This is what you said you want, not what I want. So a lot of times I'm always reminding him, these are the goals you set, not dad. My job as dad is to support you. If you say I want to be the best, understand that comes with a cost. That's right. Understand that's a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Understand that you always talk about the, uh, the greatness, the journey. Understand that it's a process and it's a sacrifice to greatness that you're going to have to make. There's certain things you can do. There's certain things you can do. There's certain things that... You know, your other friends are going to be doing mm -hmm. that BJ going to have to be like, man, I, I can't do it. But you got to be OK with not doing it. So I always try to support him in that regard and make sure that, hey, this is what you want to do. At any point, you don't want to do it no more. You let me know. Right. Because as long as you tell me you want to do it, I'm going to keep pushing you. And once you think you're comfortable, I'm going to push you some more and keep pushing you some more. So that's that's what I kind of try to model my parenting ass, you know, like it's a partnership at the same time. Right. You know? So it started out like, let me live my, uh, uh, my days through my son. Definitely started that right. way. Right. And I think it started with everybody. Mm -hmm. and if they honest. Right. Yeah, because everybody wants it. That's my baby. That's my baby. That's right. Well, you know, I, mean, I can see him doing it. I, I get behind him. Right. Yeah. Um, but then a lot of times, if they don't recognize that that's not the way to go, mm -hmm. all of a sudden the stress, mm -hmm. the pressure, Mm -hmm. All come on his back, That's aka right. the gristle. That's right. Right. That's right. So now you spec to him <laughs> to make magic. That's right. And he ain't put the work in yet. That's right. That's he right. got to put the work in. So, so BJ. So it's and I know you probably experienced that at times too, yes, right? Sir. Like yeah, on, on my back, on my back. Okay, okay. How, right. how did you handle it? Well, I knew I had to listen to what he says and not how he says it because sometimes it can come off a little rougher than what he really means it's just i have to understand that his passion and that he wants the best for me right yes, so that, that passion come out of him yes, right sir. and then that sometimes that passion can be smooth or some of that passion can be overbearing but you have to recognize the passion but once again that's that father-son relationship too Yes, sir. Right? Because so, Kyle, you do got to go home with him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we had some rough car rides now. We done had some rough, some rough car ride. And I'll say this, too. Uh, that's what my wife would come in the part because a lot of times she'll, he'll talk to her like, Mom, da 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 da. And she'll know now ain't the time to say nothing, son. <laughs> or she'll tell me, like, hey, you know, right. son. 
da 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 da. Right. And I'm like, did I really? Was I like that? Yeah. Because the passion is sometimes mm -hmm. you get lost mm -hmm. in the passion and you don't realize it. And then later I'd be like, hey man, you know, you know I just want the best for you, right? Yes, sir, I know. Right. All right. And that's where honestly that came up. That that saying came up, don't listen to what I say, not how I say it. Yeah. Not just me, even with coaches, because right. I've realized I'm not always going to be your coach. I told him, I said, man, you got you got me as your fan for life. You probably got me as your coach for another year or two. Yeah, right, and, and, right, and I got to right. let it go. And I said, I can't control how a coach talked to you. I don't know what environment he was brought up in. I don't know how he was raised. My job is to find the right situation to put you in. And, of course, anytime suck a car salesman, right, mm -hmm. they're going to give you the best. Right. You don't know how they're going to be. The customer service is going to be after you buy that car. Correct. And you come talk to them later. Hey, I got to put you in the best situation at that time, but later I can't control all the minutia in the middle. I exactly. can't control all that. So you got to listen to what they say, not how they say exactly. it. Right. And I, and I tell you is I was talking, I went to, uh, my daughter had a volleyball game mm. and um, she didn't play that much. And she was on a team with a lot. She was young. She was seven years old. Everybody else on the team was 10, mm. but she was that good. But they really didn't give her a chance. Right. So when they did give her a chance to get in, she messed up right away. Mm. And I screamed, and, it, and it's so crazy. We 24, 23, she get this point, we win it. Oh, game she on the line. She hits it in the net. And you should have heard my voice, like, God. I, I was yeah. like, and she looked, she heard it, and it was the wrong timing, wrong moment. You know, my patch came out, but it was a, it was a different patch. It was a patch like she needed to win. Cause yeah. I'm thinking like, if she do good, she's gonna play more. Next level. It was a different level. Yeah. Came out and she cried. Wow. She was hurt. And right then I said, mm -mm. if I can't bring the passion out of love, mm. then I can't bring the passion out of anger. That's good. That's so good. and that's ever since then, our relationship changed. So now when she do well, she look at me. I'm like, yeah. And she do bad. She look at me. I'm like, yeah. Right, but it would know. But she knew. Okay, let me get that thumbs up. That's right. Because she want that thumbs up. That's right. BJ, thumbs up. You want that thumbs up. You want that 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 support when yes, you do sir. well. When you don't do well, what is your thought process then? When you don't do well, because ain't no one perfect. Yes, sir. Right, no no human perfect anyway. Right, so when that time get tough, how you handle it? You know, because people because you in a position. I mean, I mean, I mean this is a two part question. How do you handle when the thumbs are down, right? And being a quarterback. I think that's where it get real tricky because I'm the one quarterback on the field. Yes, How sir. you handle that thumbs down? So me and my dad, we kind of have like our own little sign language type thing. And so I look at him and he'll tell me what I'm what I need to fix while I'm on the field. But as a quarterback, on my own, I'm kind of hard on myself because, like, I'm the only court. Well, I'm the person on the field that's making the mistake, right. and I'm supposed to be the leader and help my team to win this game. So I just have to remember, move on. I can't really think about it too long. What's in the past is in the past for a reason. So, mm -hmm. and if I dwell on it for too long, it's just gonna bring, keep staring me down. So I yeah. just gotta remember, next play, move on. That's right. I like that word, next. That's a big word, next. Next play, keep moving on, keep on going from there, right? So let's go ahead and get into it now about this quarterback situation, mm. right? Because we're a quarterback, and that's a task, a tough task already because we're black quarterbacks. Right. I mean, yes, I'm, you sir. know, this listen low show. We keep it real, we keep it raw, that's right? right? You're a black quarterback, young black quarterback, already a stigma. Even though the NFL got a lot of black quarterbacks doing well right now, yes, but, sir. you know, it's well, I don't know what, about 30-something teams, and it's still only about five or six that start. So that's, that's right. still a small percentage right there. And so you are already kind of limiting yourself because you don't you 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 up against a lot of challenges already. So to be a quarterback, make that decision to be a quarterback, knowing there's only one quarterback on the field. Everything you do from tackle football to seven oh seven to flag, whatever the case might be, there's still only one quarterback. You might I play, see. you might not. Hmm. Why you want to be a quarterback? when I'm quite sure you got the ability and the talent to play any other position with a multiple guys on the field at the same time. Why quarterback? I like the leadership, bro. I like being able to take charge and be in command, basically. Mm. Yes, sir. I never heard that one. I thought somebody said, I didn't want to throw a touchdown. <laughs> I like to do that too. Now. <laughs> All right, okay, come on with it. Come on out with it, cause I know you want to throw them touchdowns. Look oh, good listen. out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but but I like that too to be the leadership role, right? Cause it's, they do look at it 
quarterbacks is you know the smart, the most smart person on the field, and the quarterback, and that's another stigma uh, because Absolutely. you know if like the white quarterbacks are better, they smarter, they more intelligent, right? They know they they know the system, they know the schemes, they know the ins and out, they know the defense very well better than the black quarterback. Can you after him just take off and make him a run? Right. Yes, sir. But you already took ownership of being that leadership, but that leadership comes with a lot of responsibilities. Yes, sir. Because they know you lose. I mean. They're on your back. You win, they have it for you. You lose, it changes the game. So that's a different emotion for, you know, for right now, you know, 12, 13-year-old kid. But you start a quarterback at what age? Uh, probably was what, eight maybe? I think it was eight. Cause it was I, eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it, you were just about to turn nine. It was yeah. Eight. yeah. Eight years old, I'm going to be a quarterback eight years old. Forget everything else. I'm going to be a quarterback. I'm going to play quarterback, and that's what I am. And – you had to prepare for it. You had to train for it. Now, now you just took out some time from playing in the backyard. Now, you yes, don't sir. took time away from going here and going to wedding. All the wedding wild called a wedding wild back in the days, or oh, yeah. Nasdaq or Quadica. No, you know, uh, uh-uh. no, no, no. We got to go to training. We got to go to, uh, to camps. We got to do more extra training. Extra training. It took away. I go back to Michael Jackson, right? Michael Jackson had to perform and perform and perform, right. and he lost his childhood, right? Yes, sir. You. You, it happened. I know because I know right now to the very day you're driving down to Tampa. That's two hours. Yes, sir. two hours of training. That's right. Two hours back. That's six hours you could have been playing, having fun with your friends. And to be honest, I really didn't even want to play quarterback. I was on a flag football team. It was uh, Seahawks flag football team. I wanted to be a receiver or a running back. Okay. But we had no. We just had a team full of athletes, and. <laughs> I happen to be one of the slowest athletes on that team. <laughs> so straight up, straight up. So um, I could throw a little bit, but my mechanics weren't there at all. Uh-huh. And I cried and cried and cried until my dad, until I finally started to f- fall in love with it over time. Mm-hmm. And then we ended up winning that championship. And I was like, okay, I was fully committed with quarterback at that point. Wow. So you just, you just fell into it. Right. Kind of. Right. Yes, right? So you didn't know your destiny. You didn't know your path. You didn't know you are going to be a quarterback. And right now, you know, based on all the, the tournaments and the camps and that you've been winning MVP and then everybody talking about it and the championship and the national team, you know, it's, it's, I'm going to say it. Number one quarterback in the country at your age. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to call it like I see it because, I mean, proof is in the pudding. I mean, let's get it wrong now. We can go to quarterback universe. We can go to uh, even FBU, get camps and all different camps. You are athletes, and we can we get a point out there. But that com- that comes with a, uh, a lot of responsibility, once again, that comes with a lot of tension and a lot of expectations. That's right, sir. And that's the next word. Now, let's go ahead and move to the expectation side of being a quarterback, right? Big expectation. For you to step up, line up, and get the job done. Are you prepared for the expectation? Not just a twelve year old. Kind of get harder before it get easier as a quarterback. Are yes, you sir. ready for it? One hundred percent. Yes, sir. Okay, you ready for to take that challenge? Or like this, is what it is now? Because now, when you step into the high school role, yes, sir. And they're eighteen years old. They're seventeen. You know, we're looking to play as a freshman. Yes, sir. They looking to get us go to college. You got to line up in there as a ninth grader, maybe tenth grader. He in the twelfth grade trying to go to college. Got to throw him that ball. Yes, That's sir. a whole nother expectation that you're gonna get it done to help him get to college. What are you doing to prepare for that? Besides physical. Well, me and my dad always say we try to play two levels ahead. So if I'm in seventh grade now, I'm trying to play. I'm trying to play like a ninth grader. And I have to have that mentality to play older, play ahead. I always like to train with older guys anyways mm-hmm. because it just builds me up faster and just helps me adjust to what I'm going to be used to when I get older. Right. So I heard what you said, that, that mentality, right? Yes. That's where the mental side come in. At. So let's talk about the mental side mm-hmm. because here's what my son told me, Lowood Jr. He said, Daddy, I felt like if I would have had more uh, help mentally, I would be able to handle things like cause he snapped his Achilles, you know, on his year to start for Universal Notre wow. Dame. So, the, so he's like mentally, he's like, I'm out of it. Right. So he needed that mental side, that mental help. Now I thought I would give it to him because I'm right there. I got you. I got your back. You know what I mean? Uh, even coming all the way up, you no, know, I'm there with you. But really, I was there for to train him, to mm. coach him, and and put and take him to the place he need to go. 
the mental side. What is the mental side of training or preparing him for the big expectation as a quarterback? What are y'all doing mentally? Well, the first thing I say is the word of God, our faith. We we are a faith-based family. Like our our whole life and just all the opportunities and everything, it, it stems from God. So I always say, you know, trust God, trust the process. Fall in love with the uh, trust God, trust the process. Fall in love with the grind. You gotta love it, mm-hmm. but you gotta keep God first in mm-hmm. everything you do. Trust the process, trust the grind, but you gotta keep God first. And, and that's the main thing. We try to have that balance, you mm-hmm. know. Daily affirmations, um, daily scripture. Mm-hmm. A lot of times my wife takes them to school, so they have their daily scriptures. He has his daily devotional book, cause that's the center, right? Like I always tell him, you're not a football player. You're 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 a a child of God that happens to play football. Right. You know, so football's your vehicle. But when you get to where you're gonna go, what are you gonna tell people about? Cause got to be more to you than just ball, right? right. You know, and, and God gives us gifts and talents for us ultimately to lift him up, to exalt him. So that's the main thing is right. keeping that. So whether it's a good day or a bad day, you still won today because you woke up, you're breathing, you're moving, yeah. you're living, you got use and activity of your limb. So that's always something in the in the midst of a, a tough patch or a rough patch. That's, that's kind of what we fall back on, even myself. Like I'm like, all right, Lord, you got to help me today. I don't mm-hmm. know what – sometimes I don't have the words – to say to tell you after you play bad or after you didn't have a good training session or after I felt like I wasted my money taking you out there today, right. <laughs> I, I have nothing positive to say. Right. But you know what's always positive? The word. Hey, we're going to talk about it. We overcome by the word of our testimony. We had a rough day. Guess what? Tomorrow's another day. Another day you know, to get it done. Another day. Well, so that's that That's that, that mental side of so you know, as I say, by putting God first and we know that's that. Right. And, and that's why that's where um, I see that so hard for a lot of athletes nowadays, physically, I'm ready. Mm-hmm. Mentally, I'm struggling. Mm-hmm. So I don't know what, they don't know what to do. They don't know what, which direction to go. When the tough get rough, they don't know how to take it on the chin like the rest of us. They don't know how to sit down and, and pray on it. Or they don't know how to sit down and talk about it. You know, put it on paper, That's write right. it down, setting goals. That's right. right. I always tell my kids, write down three goals mm-hmm. that you want to accomplish in this sport. Or three goals you want to accomplish in school. Three goals you want to accomplish at your job. Three goals you want to accomplish at your training. Write the goals down, right? And then you you see them, and now you're trying to do everything to accomplish them three goals. That's right. We already know you're going to play football. We already know we're big, we're strong, we're fat, we can run, and we can throw. But this game here is one, not just physically, it's mentally. Most of it's mental. And then last thing I would say is vocally. Mm -hmm. Vocal leader, right? Vocal leader. And I was... And it's interesting. I went to, I did a camp with BJ and I kept listening. I'm why I'm listening. I'm listening. Vocal leader, vocal leader. What make you want to stand up and like, and be the person that they call the cadence, right? I got one, two, three, four guy. I got it. I got it. I got it. Or I, I, I'm up next. Okay. I got this. Next. Let me show you where that leadership come from. Well, it's kind of been installed in me at a, at a young age. Um, at this point, it's not really a mentality. It's still a mentality, but it's more like a lifestyle. I do it at home too. I just like things a certain way, and I just correct it when I see it. Mm. Mm. That's pretty. That's pretty good too. Like I didn't take that to my job and tell them people about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like things a certain way, and I just yeah. see what I see, right? Yep. But, but that's that leadership we're talking about, you know. And to have that mentality at 12, 13 years old is is, is kind of unheard of, right? But then again, I do hear a couple of the quarterbacks kind of talk like that too. It's interesting. The quarterback got a whole different mindset. You got to. I don't receive. They don't have no. They don't think about nothing. All they want to do is run out and catch a ball. <laughs> they want the ball, but right? The quarterback, they think it, boy. Those some thinkers, boy. Right. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I can I would, I would love to do the the uh, the personality type on BJ, right? See if he analytical, expressive, mm-hmm. amber, or driver, right? Mm-hmm. And normally the quarterback, all of them come out straight up analytical. They, they analyze, analyze everything, break down everything, think of everything, what we're doing, and that's that also do make them a really good quarterback too That's because right. they can analyze very well That's right. from there. So let's move into starting doing a camp mm-hmm. and you're fourth grade and you say, I'm going to put him in a camp, mm-hmm. right? I don't supposed to be in that camp, but right. I'll put him in that camp. Right, right, right. <laughs> and we get in the camp and no one knows the true grade, but you produce like everyone else. Mm-hmm. But at the very end, we they wanted to recognize, but I just couldn't do it. 
from there. You challenge yourself to compete against older. And I heard you say you like competing against older. Um, but when you compete against them or you work with them, you don't really get all the rewards that they get. When yes, you, you know, and, and when you leave there, what is your mindset then? When I was younger, I was a little upset. But mm. as I grew up and learned, I may not get rewarded for everything that I do. And that next time when I come back next time, Trust me, the reward will be mine. Mm, I like that. That's a that's a confidence on came out right there. So yes, so will you agree that working with the other other uh athlete that's older than you helped you build that confidence? Yes, sir. Right. And see, see a lot of it the people just want to go with their own age. Let me go be the man at this age. Let me just go be the number one. Let me beat them here. Is that is that is that them thinking about the now? Because they want to just win right now, or they want to just be the guy right now. Because where it sounds like, okay, I, I don't. BJ said I don't want to win it right now. Uh, let me, let me, let me get it later when it's, it means something. Mm -hmm. Or what's your thought process on that? Because you could just stay down with the fourth, fourth grade, and fifth grade, and be the man. I, I always told him like, I'm gonna put you in uncomfortable situations, right? You know, like I'm gonna put you in a camp, or I'm gonna put you in training where you're not going to be the best person all the time. Not because I, I don't, you know, I don't want you to feel like, oh, man, I can't dominate. No, you're always chasing the next, right? Mm -hmm. Like NFL, you can draft the number one guy, but what are they trying to do the next year? Draft no, no, somebody no, else to come no, take no, your number job, one guy. right? College, <laughs> they, their jobs depend on you producing. I always tell him this game is a production based business. Like you could be the man today and tomorrow you cannot. And a lot of times, I've always done that. Where on his youth team, most teams you're not blessed to have two really good quarterbacks. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? You normally mm -hmm. have one quarterback. Mm -hmm. You don't play no other position. Whatever, mm -hmm. whatever. And there's times. I even had to tell him, like, bro, you you playing like you can't be replaced. Mm. You know what I'm saying, bro? You practicing like it's nobody else that want to take your job. And, and in essence, it is true because a lot of times I fire him or the coach will fire him, and three plays later I got to rehire you because right. you don't got nobody else. <laughs> right, exactly. You know, so I always tell him, like, I got to create situations for you to not get mm -hmm. comfortable because if you're comfortable, you're going to become complacent. And that's a dangerous place to be in is to be complacent. So even at home, like, I, he probably be like, man, what daddy going through today? Sometimes the training, I was like, it's going to be, we had this little place in our neighborhood we call the Valley, mm -hmm. right? It's a little ditch we trained in. I made it hell for him. In there, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like creating stuff. Like, what can I create today that's just make it, make it tough? Make it tough because you know what I'm saying. I don't have another kid. I don't. He don't have an older brother to push him. You know what I'm saying? I never played quarterback. You know what I'm saying? So, so we always, uh, always try to make it tough. Try to make it hard. And then when his his trainers, like his first trainer that he had, I I, I don't take anything. Chris Leak was his first trainer. Chris Leak had him in tears. Had him crying. Like. But it made him mentally, you was talking about that early, he preached mental toughness. Right. You know, and then now his quarterback trainer now, B.J. Hall, is just a continuation. Now mm -hmm. he's training with other guys, older guys, and he'll tell him, hey, man, I'm not taking it easy on you because you get the job done or get out the drill. I'm right. not taking it easy on you because mm -hmm. you're in seventh grade. Mm -hmm. If you out here with them, he's training with 11th graders, 12th graders, some college guys. He don't care. You know, like he told him, hey, you come out here and train with me, you stay to both sessions. You do your private session and you do the the, the high school right, session. Right. You come train with me. Don't come back out here with that TDY football or that TDJ football. You throwing the high school ball, or, or you can't train with me. Mm. So it helped, and I love that he would get in the car down. Man, this ball. So your hey, your backup will figure out how to throw it. Or right. Maybe maybe, <laughs> maybe he's not the backup. Maybe you the backup. So and speaking of that, let's go to now. Now, now you know you you open up something now. Yeah. You finna open up a can of worm now that backup <laughs> situation. Oh, go with it. Okay. So most quarterback parents, let's let's go ahead and get into it now. Mm -hmm. They don't want but one quarterback on the team. You're right. You're right. They we need reps, reps, reps. All the trainers tell them you need mm -hmm. reps, you need reps, you need reps. Mm -hmm. Right. So. So they're taking them everywhere. Right. I mean, they are jump from team to team. I mean, if somebody does come on there and and if in the compete against, I'm out of here. I'm gone. Right. 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 And I understand it to a certain degree, but then again, for me, I don't really understand it because I think you know, got to always compete. Right. Because now we get to high school, you can't do all that jumping and jumping and jumping. Because same thing, Alabama and Georgia Bulldogs coach head coach Nick Saban when he was at uh, head coach Alabama, and when Kirby Smart said they don't want guy that's jumping. 
That's right. That's right. I'm going from here. They already got the port and all the transfer port, got all the other stuff. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to jump from one high school to another high school to another high school. You're running. Right. You're a runner. Right. So now you're. Track star. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. You're a track (laughs) star. You ain't a football player that want to grind, that want to compete. That's what Mm -hmm. they want. Mm -hmm. So you guys played on a youth football team, Trey Man Elite, Mm -hmm. and all your years. And I question a pin of other guys trying to bring other players and trying to bring other players, the other quarterbacks in, in right. play. What? How that process went? Because I know, I know now it can be tricky. So you know, mm-hmm. was it that I brought somebody I'm going to compete, or I'm I'm out of here? Right. Cause you guys have been there all them years, mm-hmm. and every year there's a challenge. Oh yeah, for I sure. don't want to call it out. I want people to know because this, this is a little show. Keep it real. Keep it real. So why you need to pack up and go at times or what make you stay in the, the, the grind out and make you compete to be the best? What I always tell you, adversity what? Builds character. Adversity builds character. And I'll be honest, I, I was one of them parents too. We keeping it real. Like, man, I, I, I want my son to get all the reps. Mm-hmm. You know, we paying for training. Yeah. We working extra. This is <laughs> youth is. football. This is the time where he's learning to be, you know, whatever, whatever. I, I, I'm guilty. I was that guy. You know, and this year, you know, we had some kids, hey, come in, want to come to the team, play the same position. I came to him, hey, hey, man, what you want to do? Hey, you know, you could go try to try to play some high school ball as an eighth grader. That situation, I got to do some research. I don't know right. if that's the right uh-huh. fit for you. Right. Um. Maybe so, maybe not. Here's the options. I laid it out. He was like, Dad, I'm going to stay on my team. You know, if I'm not, he was like, only way I leave my team is if I'm going to play high school ball. He was like... It's, it's cool. I say, all right, well, let's rock it. Let's go with it. You know, and as the father in me, I'm like, I love it. You know, he want to compete. He he, he wants to, to prove that, you know, he brings value to the team. And anytime, we always talk about that. Leave a situation that you come into. Leave it better when you leave than it was before you came. Correct. And Correct. understand that greatness attracts things. Like, if you're in a great situation, it's going to be other people that want to be attracted to that. And they're not wrong. You don't want to go to a situation that's bad. You want to go to something that's good because now you want to feel like, man, I want to make that better. They got this, they got that. You know what I'm saying? So that's just the reality of life. But if I'm just being honest and transparent, I'm not, I was that parent too. Like, man, no, nah, my son, I want my son to get all the reps. I want right. my son to get it. I mean, like, I still have to check myself sometimes to this day and, and sit back. You know, I'm like, hey, you fight for your reps. I have that father talk on the way to practice and that father taught leaving practice. And when at practice, I'm the coach, you know, like I'm, a, I'm, 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 a, I'm not the head coach, but I'm assistant. It's no favoritism. It's none of that, bro. Like I'm on you just like I'm on the other guy. I'm on the other guy just like I'm on you. I want him to make you better. I want you to make him better. And at the end of the day, you win the job. It ain't no favors. I, yeah. You know, win the job. Well, and that's, you know, I, I like your answer, mm-hmm. but then others don't have that same mindset. Got you. Got you. Right. So they don't have that same mindset, but then all of a sudden, when something go wrong, they get hurt, they get sick. Mm-hmm. Got nobody else. Right. Did you just let the team down? Got you. See, some people just got lucky. Right. Right. Never had no injury. You have any injuries during your season? Made all the way through. They protect you. Right. Years and years and years. No problem. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> yeah. But a lot of people don't have that. That that they have a change. And right. I and I remember clearly as a team that great team and the boy got uh, stitches. Mm-hmm. He was out. Now they had to bring an athlete at quarterback, and they struggle right. real right. bad. Right. Now the team down. That could have been a different than being a champion and uh, going to that championship or going to a championship game, or the season is done, the season is over. Right. So, but you, do you, is, is that mean you focus on just your kid or you focus on the team? That's the that's the challenging part, too, because as a dad, right, I, I was all my son this, but then I had to check myself. Like as a coach, like from a coach's perspective, that's kind of selfish. Mm. What if what if something does happen to your son? You got not just your son, but you have the rest of the team. That's too. right. And and I had to have that reality talk with myself, like in the mirror on my rise to work. Like, man, that's kind of selfish. Just 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 go out there because any situation you go into, they're gonna typically have a backup high school. Whatever may not be as good, but they're gonna have a backup. So I just told him like, hey. You got to go out there and be the guy, no matter what. You you got to be the guy. And at the end of the day, it's no disrespect. It's no knock. You know, don't let the coach think about the backup. 
just being that's the dad talk like he right. know he got a backup you know what i'm saying right. that's like when you go travel right you got your debit card you got your travel card you know i'm good ah this car got money but you keep a backup doesn't case hey mr k this car is not they're not taking it oh my gosh you know now you got a backup you know yeah. it, it's it's a comfort you know that you gotta have but if you secure in yourself and you like to compete and you're doing things the right way and it's going to help him be on this game every day. But yeah. you can't take a day off. But you don't want to use that backup card because it's a backup. It's a backup. That's <laughs> right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. We don't want to use that. But so I, I so just hearing both you guys talk and you talk about the journey and the process you guys been going through, the journey you've been going through, and you have your physical side up with the train, the hardcore mm -hmm. training, driving hours all the way down to Tampa. That's try right. to get the training. People are like the Why quarterback do house. That? Shout out to the quarterback house. Yeah, I know, Coach right? Hall. But that's a lot of but but think about it, which is great. But I mean, a lot of people ain't able. Right. And you know, they do they do all that, all that sacrificing, right? Here's my question. You did all that sacrifice, all that hard work, everything going well. If things don't pan out for BJ as a quarterback mm -hmm. in this journey and this day and age, how things going, or he just came out and it just got so much, you just I'm, I'm done with it, or it got too much pressure. Mm -hmm. I know we got everything beside us. What what's what, what's your thoughts now? How you feel? You know that all the stuff you did and all of a sudden now, I don't want to do it no more. I, me and my wife, I I live with no regrets. You know I. I'm charged as a dad, as a parent. If my child says they have dreams, they have aspirations. I'm going after it with everything I got. You know, you don't run a race expecting to lose, mm -hmm. but that is a possibility, right? So I always, you know, there's no there's no guarantees in anything that we're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like the stock market. You know, you 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 see a good stock, you invest in it, you hope that it does whatever, and you cultivate it and do all that you're supposed to do on your end. That that's kind of how we parent, like. Hey, we going after it wholeheartedly. We're going to work plan A like there's no plan B. Right. But we're going to be multifaceted. You know, you're going to have a good head. That's why I preach education. Like I tell them, like C's, I don't accept them, you know, in, in my house. That's that's average. Like you got to see, man, we got a real conversation we got to have. You right. know, there's too many resources. We're too involved in every step. Like I'm checking his portal you know with his grades like hey man what's up with this test how you doing i'm not i'm not micromanaging you but i'm expecting if there's something that you're struggling with don't tell me when it's almost the, the end zone time tell me when we at the 50 you know what i'm saying right, exactly. tell me so that i can get you the resources to help you be right. successful so now we're gonna let's take a turn now mm -hmm. because you talk about the academic you talk about the grades right That's right and but what's don't what we'll have changed now mm -hmm. is the nil yeah the NIL have changed the game. The brand have changed the game. And you guys have your brand right now, right. the B-Backs, yes, right? Sir. Yes, sir. So yes, we got sir. the brand, right? Uh, yes, sir. But that brand brings what we call money. Got you. Now, remember now, there's, you talking about all this academic and everything, but that money can kind of change the game a little bit. Mm. We have changed the game. It don't went, to my opinion, from money ball to football. Right, right. Right? So you doing it. Which one is it? Is it money ball or is it football? Money ball versus football. So that student athlete is where it used to be. Mm -hmm. Now it's athlete student. How are you going to be able to handle that now when it's time for him to go to high school when they throwing the money at him now? This is the number one quarterback coming in out of mm -hmm. out of uh, eighth grade. He going to high school. You no, know, we want him at this school. We want him at this school. We want him at that school. Well, we got an NIL over here, NIL over there. I how y'all prepare for that part because it's going to happen. Gotcha, gotcha. What, and, and are you ready for it? Because you might want to see, you say you want to stay with your friends. <laughs> All your friends went to Ocala Christian or a Catholic. But they want you over here at Tampa Catholic. Mm -hmm. I, you know, they, they're going to get you a bunch of NILs. Daddy got to, and mom got to make a decision now where we're going. Mm -hmm. and that's a great fit everywhere, but, you know, the money going to step in. That's right. Have you even thought about that now? I, I think about it all the time. Um, it's And not from an aspect of wanting the money. Because um, the Bible says, for the love of money is the root of all evil. Mm -hmm. Money is the answer to a lot of things. Don't get me wrong. Um, but if you make decisions based off of, first of all, consulting God and letting him lead and direct your path, you know, you're always going to be in the right position. I, I'm a firm believer, favor to me is more than valuable than money. Cause sometimes money 
can't take you some places that favor can. So I want to be, I want him to be in a situation where he has the favor of God. You know, whether he plays a good game, heard you talk about that on another show, mm -hmm. or a bad game, son, you still, we still have favor with you. You're our guy. Because right. no one's perfect, right? So, yes, we're in a production-based business, but even with the NIL, you know, it's, it's, it's great. When we started his brand, it, it never was about money. You know, honestly, it was about him wearing something that meant something. Him wearing something that had a message that encouraged people. Philippians 4 and 13, I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. I wanted people, I specifically didn't design it with the words of the scripture. I wanted people to ask him, what does Philippians 4 and 13 mean? So that he can not just wear it, but confess it, you know, out of his mouth. So the money, it's it's changing, coach. It's, it's changing. <laughs> um, You know, I can't really even, you know, those conversations really haven't happened yet. But one thing I can say is, you know, money is never going to be a, a, a deciding factor of what we got to make sure it's the right situation. And uh, whatever God decides to bless him with along the way, we're going to manage it the right way. And we're going to give back and we're going to do, you know, help others come up because there's not just us. This is a team. You've been a blessing to us. We've got a, a host of other people that believe in him, you know, and, and, and invest into him. And we owe it to them to make their investment count, you know. make they, They're not asking for money back, but we want to represent them in the right exactly. way. Exactly. So, BJ, we talk about B-Max, Philippians mm -hmm. 413. I can do all things through Christ and strengthen us. But think about that. When someone asks you, you know, what is that? And when you tell them, what response are they getting back? Because it's because a lot of people, you know, they ain't so happy putting, you know, right. wearing God on their chest these days. You know, you, you know I mean, it's just what it is. That's right. right. That's but right. you, you know, most twelve year olds and thirteen year olds, they're not even thinking about that. They mind on totally something different, right. right? I mean, I know. I watch on social media. I see all the group chats they have. I see the things that they're saying. You know, and, and there's an image there, mm -hmm. right? And there, so when you start representing. Christ on your chest, it, it, it's a big, it, it's even a harder stress for you because everybody like, why are you doing that? You know, they, they, they question it. Mm -hmm. How you feel when, when someone asks you that or when you're wearing it, you know, what that means to you when you walk around B Max and Philippians 413. It, it brings joy to my heart because I get to rock my, my nickname and also I get to rock God as well. So it's we're kind of working together, me and God, you know, God first, of course, but, yeah. I like that. I like that combination too, right? We're working together, right? right. My name in here, but God first. Isn't that something? But you're already still instilling that into him, right? If he can go out there and don't be afraid to represent it. That's right. Right? You know, and I like the brand. I like the name B Mac. It's so crazy about it. I'm, I be saying BJ, BJ, BJ. I don't <laughs> even say B Mac. I don't know. I, know, right? I'm on, I think I'm about the only one to say BJ. Yeah, yeah. Right? I'm on, well, but, right? I don't never say B Mac. Yeah, you don't but, answer to BJ something like B Mac. <laughs> <laughs> but um you got the brand it's going but you know i'm saying but at the same time you might have to start doing stuff with the brand mm -hmm. you I, it's just what it is i see you start moving forward with it you got the shirts going on and you say i'm wearing mine yes, i like sir. it yes, sir. right i wore mine one day and 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 i got like so many likes on it about it no because people some there are people out there that do appreciate uh people no fear you know mm -hmm. uh Represent God. It's funny you say that, and I won't say the guy's name, but I literally just got a message from a guy the other day um, that, that follow on social media. His son's a quarterback, too, and he um, got his son's logo done, and he added a scripture, and he messaged me like, hey, man, I hope you don't think we're trying to copy because uh -huh. you got – I said, listen, <laughs> absolutely not. I said, it brings me joy that you – you know, have your son logo made and you add a scripture. That's what it's about. It's about spreading the love of Jesus, spreading the gospel. And I say the fact that now, you know, we're stronger together. Now we got, a, I got somebody else doing mm -hmm. the same thing. So maybe BJ's scripture encourages them today and they see your son and his scripture encourages them tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Like every day is a different, <clears throat> a different set of obstacles and everything. I'm like, if that's what it's doing, great. That's what it was intended to do. Also, it's to let him know that, hey, every day, you being watched because he could do little things. Now, I always tell him what I tell you, you can't get away with with anything, anything yeah. coach. 
he tries something and we get a call or a phone call or t- <laughs> he t- and I told him I say it's because you're marked, you're, you're marked. branded. Yep. Like you can't you can't get away with anything and there's an expectation. That's like right. you're wearing that, people gonna test you on that. Let's yeah. see. Let's see if you're gonna be like that in the good, in the bad. So it, it's it's a standard that you you gotta uphold every you, single day. You know what day. they say. You never know who's watching. Never know. You never know who's watching. You'll never be surprised. Know. Like, ah, I didn't know he's how do you know? Yeah. Like, though I was uh, talking to you the other day, and it's okay. Like I said, it's on the listen low show. Go now. with it. Go Don't with it. Don't bring it out now. Go with it. You going to a camp. Let's mm-hmm. get let's 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 turn the wheel now. Let's turn that wheel. Gotcha. And now we talk about we talk about training. We talk about the sacrifice we're making with training. We talk about the physical side, we talk about the mental side, right? We right. talk about being proud, you know, to wear you know, Christ on our chest, right? Mm-hmm. All that. But now we're finna go into the camp world. Gotcha. Right. We're going to all these football camps. We're doing great. We come out MVP, MVP. Mm-hmm. Right. You know they say, you know, there's no rewards on the bench. You want to be rewarded. Right. Right. People recognize who you are. And I didn't want to just jump in before we get into the camp series. I want to know about that. And you, you said you go to the camp and somebody recognize. Oh. Yeah. So I, he went <laughs> On the bus tour, and, and I won't jump too far forward because I know you're going to get to that. Yeah. Went on the, the bus tour. Again, shout out to the quarterback house. Great. I I, I uh, <coughs> advise any parent that that child is really serious, that a young athlete is really serious about playing the game at the next level, you should do it. Right. Um, but there's one camp he went to, and I, I don't even know the guy. We smooth sailing through it all. It's to the point where I'm like, he going in, and me and, me and mom coming in afterwards, you know, because he went the bus tour. Right. And I get a call, Dad, they won't let me do the camp. It's like, what, what you mean? We've been going, what you mean they won't let you do the camp? I don't know. I was in, and um, I'm good. You know, I'm registered. And I get in, and another guy's son can't get in. And he called. He's like, I don't even know this guy. He's like, the guy says, hey, I follow him on Twitter. That's B-Max. He's the same class as my son. You know, so they wouldn't let him in the camp. I'm not going to mention the university because we never know what God might do. But they wouldn't let him in the camp um, because, you know, on his class, they, they weren't right. accepting right, 2029s. Right. Right. Some camps would, some camps wouldn't. Some right. camps don't really care. Um, but this particular camp, they were being really uh, strict about it. And they came up and asked him, you know, he could have lied. They was like, man, are you class of 2029? And he was like, Dad, I told, you know, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I'm class of 2029. And they told him he couldn't do it. It crushed him. You know what I'm saying? But that gave us a chance. We sitting in the camp. He's so mad, eventually we had to leave. He was just that mad. You know, we left and went and did something as a family. Yeah, and it, right. it worked out great. Uh, we, we went. We I won't even say what we went and did because I might tell you where the university is. Yeah. But we had a good time as a family. Um, and uh, it, it just gave him a day. You know, I always say that everything happens for a reason. You know, he had been competing really hard. And these camps, I'll be honest, they're gruesome. So it actually gave him a day a day off to kind of do some recovery and get his body right. But it gave me a chance as a father to have that real life. Like we talk mm-hmm. about adversity builds character. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you could have showed out, you could have did this or that. You never know who's watching. Mm-hmm. You never know if the recruiting coaches they're watching, the director of recruiting, whatever, player relations, head coach. I said, you handled it with class. You went and sat in the stands. It was nothing that you did of your own. But I said, you had to deal with that. And I say, now, you know what? You got to sit there and watch. But it makes you better, and it makes you appreciate every other camp that you were able to get in. It makes you appreciate the next camp that you went to that you was like, nah, I got to stand on business today. You know, an opportunity was taken from me, and now I got a chance today. You're going to value every moment. So exactly. that was a good learning lesson, right. even though we didn't expect that. You know, But, but it, again, happened. it happened. It happened. I know you was there. You ready. You set. Let's go. I'm ready to go compete. That's right. And all of a sudden, you realize that someone, they went on your side. Right, some people call it haters, but uh, you know, you need that. Way. You but need that. you need that living in your life sometimes. Life lesson, yes, right? Sir. So you learn a life lesson right there that sometimes you do things and people don't like what you're doing, right? They don't want to see you successful. They don't want to see you grow, right? They want to compete. They want to be where you at or what the case might be. But then again, on the flip side of it, at least you know you found you had a fan because he was watching your Instagram. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yep. I say, wow, that, hey, that's somebody yeah. know who you is. You're doing but something you, right. But you had an opportunity doing something that seventh grader would love to do, right? Anybody who would go to all the regular camps out there. But to get on a bus tour and go through the process as a seventh grader, going to the eighth grade, to see the, the how it works, right? How it works from start all the way to finish, what it really takes to be recognized, to be seen, to compete, to get scholarships, 
right? See the politics side of it. Mm. You know, I know you see some of your boys out there doing great, didn't get no scholarship. Boy over here throwing ducks or whatever because he this size or whatever and got scholarship. Or you see a boy over here uh, don't even, don't like he can do nothing, but he ran a four three. But your boy over here ran a little slower. But you know they get him the scholarship. You see, you got a chance to see it all. It open your eyes, right? Yes, sir. Tell us about that experience going that bus tour. It was it was fun. I got to hang out with some new guys I didn't know. Got to meet them, um, and then a couple of my friends as well. And then at the camps, we were all we had this little thing going. They they hated us. They called us a bunch of names. They hate. They said we hate the Florida boys and stuff like that because we kept on skipping and we were getting our reps, <laughs> getting recognition. <laughs> boys was getting mad at us. <laughs> it was it was pretty fun. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> but so you so there's a process on how to get the reps. A lot of guys out there. A lot of lot of, lot of everybody jumping, moving, you know, trying to get in and get they get seen, right? Yes, sir. But you the seventh grade. Yes, what, sir. How you skipping somebody? And man, if I was in twelfth grade, and you skipped me. I'd be knocking you out. How you get in front to get all them reps? Well, so the people in our bus, we told each other we're only going to give our ball to the people that rode in that bus. And we had like these arm sleeves. They're like, don't let the people with the green arm sleeves skip you. Mm -hmm. Still happen anyways. But <laughs> we would give each other each ball to snap to each other and then we'd just rotate like that. And nobody else would get a chance to get their reps because we had each other's ball. Right. Yes, so it's, you came with a strategy. You came with a plan. Yes, sir. I sat down and told everybody on the Listen to Low show, I did a, it's how to go to camps. And one of the things I told them, always wear something you can be recognized. Right. Here y'all is with some green wristbands on. So they knew who the quarterback house was. Yes, they sir. knew who the guy. So if you threw that ball, and it was a great throw, and they looked at who threw that ball, and you raised your hand, the green wrist, they know who that is. A lot of kids don't understand that it's a doggy dog world at these camps. It is. It ain't yes, no. It ain't. It's not. It's not. Uh, you are athlete, FBU, uh, UC report, Under Armour. No, them there. You know, you pay a lot of money. You go right. You trying to get get somewhere with that. You trying to get in the big All Star game, All American games, right there. This right here. This you got to get it done. That's right. You got to go in with that mentality, dog mentality. I got to get reps. I got to get up front. I got to throw this ball. I got to get many reps I can. Right. If yes, you sir. don't, you just waste your time, effort, and money. Yes, right. sir. So now you go as a seventh grader, which you own a few seventh graders get to do that, and you went and competed against some of the best of the best. You yes, were throwing, get some three, throwing to some three and four stars. How did that make you feel, BJ? Great. I mean, I got to throw with older guys, so it started to become normal after a while, maybe after the third or fourth day. Mm. And I had to realize I have to move faster because these guys, this is their normal speed. And I'm younger, so I just have to <laughs> right, right. speed it you, up. You, it's, it's like a step up already. You're like, man, what am I doing? They're going to come back and say, don't let him throw. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so if you want to keep throwing, you better get it done. Right? Because once again, here's what's crazy about the camps. Your ball can make a break that receiver. Right? Yes, sir. Your, it's, it's interesting now because I just went to a camp and two of my boys went there and they ran 4-4. Four, four. Mm. But they didn't really have a lot of film last year. So when they lined up, they running routes. That's their time. The boy was throwing the ball behind them. One of them threw the ball to the track. Mm. So that 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 hurt them because they need to see them guy after the run the route and catch the ball, put it in, get right. some yak y'all after the catch. Yeah, so sure. you you took on all that pressure where you know you got a guy there trying to get a scholarship. You're mm -hmm. willing to step in the hole and throw that ball and make sure the guys can get to your – you can get the ball to them. Yes, sir. God, oh, boy. This is why I say this too, <laughs> Coach. This where the camp – shout out to Coach Cat, r and &R, Coach Ty, uh, with r, &R camps. He started those when he was young. But it wasn't necessarily to go be camp MVP. It was to get him used to going to camps. We did that. If you ever look at pictures in the camps, always like bright cleats. Doing the year team, mm -hmm. we're wearing stuff that matches the mm -hmm. team. But when you go to camp, it's something bright. Also, consistency. If you look at him, he always wears three-quarter sleeves. I say, we got to be consistent. Your look needs to be consistent because they might not remember your name, but they might be, man, that kid, every time we see him with the wristbands on, it's consistent. Right. Tom Brady, consistent. consistent. Uh, 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 Lamar Jackson, consistent. Josh Allen, consistent. So I was telling him, like, tuck your shirt in. I was like, you a small guy. You wear small stuff. You going in there with older guys, you want to look the part. You want to wear all this baggy stuff. Correct. Tuck your shirt in. Like, right. he know. If I see him at a camp and he lost track and he tuck his shirt in, I ain't got to do nothing but one thing. He know. My, my bad. Consistent. Correct. Shoes tied, not bonnets mm -hmm. on your head and all this mm -hmm. stuff. Don't knock the people that do that. It works for some, but I'm telling you, you're a quarterback. 
your African American quarterback. You mm-hmm. gotta be different. Mm-hmm. You gotta be different. You gotta be different. And pre pre reps, when you go up on your snap, get that receiver. Tell him, hey man, and he does it. Hey man, if he lined up like you, I'm gonna put the ball like this. If he this way, I'm gonna put it like That's that. Right. Because it, you're codependent. You play a receiver dependent position. I need him to do this. I need you to get to the top of the numbers here, and I'm gonna put the ball there. We don't have a lot of time together. We don't have a lot of chemistry. But my job to make you look good, your job to make me look good. Mm-hmm. So I don't care if they're 11th grader, 12th grader, you pull them over before that rep and you talk to them. Hey, bro, we need to do this. Da, right. da, da, da. Setting it up for success. That's right. That's and, right. Then, so, and not only just setting up for success, right, is you no know, setting up that quarterback, that relationship, mm-hmm. you no know, trying to make sure that ball's on point. But also set up success because you prepare for this. Right. Now, People think it's easy. So they look at all your posts and like, oh, yeah, Man. BJ uh, doing this and he throwing here. Oh, he throw a touchdown here. They don't know the hard work it is to be on that bus. Tell us about the the, the days and days and days and car and that on that bus and getting off and got to go to the hotel, got to get back oh, up, got to go three hours, you got to go back to sleep, got to get. Then you had to do combine training, uh, combine competition too, right? Yeah, they did. At every camp, you know, they want to get your 40 time. They want to get your 5, 10, 5. They want to do all that. I'm so thankful um, he has been doing some speed training, done some stuff with you, and then we got Tony McCall um, in Ocala, Florida. Uh, he does speed training with mm-hmm. him. So he went prepared. Um, and his time was pretty consistent at every at every camp, but he understood how to do it. I mean, as far as we almost put what three thousand miles on the car traveling behind because we our thing was we just gonna be shadows, you know. Mm-hmm. Honestly, he wasn't gonna go on it. Um, I had position proposition to my wife like he need to go. His quarterback coach was like he gotta go, he gotta go, he gotta go, you know. And, and at one point we wasn't, but God made some things work. He was able to go. And uh, I'll be honest, it was a great experience for us. Open my eyes. I, you know, I thought I knew, but I learned stuff along the way that I didn't know. And, and again, this wasn't no vacation. Like, it, it was, was business. It was, it was business. It was business, yeah. It was business, business from trip. day America one. Express, yeah. American Express or Visa? Uh, hey, li- <laughs> hey, both, both. <laughs> and, and then even with them, you know, like on the body, I say to, these, to parents, like, you got to, we brought ice, you got to ice, you got to yeah. make sure you're doing your recovery. Because mm-hmm. um, BJ had it where they were able to do yoga yeah, in between. Yeah. He had life meetings with them after. Sometimes these meetings didn't take place till 11, 12 o'clock at night. Right. And we back up in the morning for breakfast. Well, y'all did meetings in the morning, right? Like, like Sometimes. In the morning, y'all did meetings in the mornings. Like, they have to be in the lobby 7 o'clock. Sometimes they did meetings or they got to be there for breakfast. So it wasn't no time. Me and mom slipped away, you know, for a little bit. But, it, yeah. you know, we got to keep up. So, so that so that, so that, that itinerary mm. is almost like college preparation. Exactly. So he can be already used to it. Exactly. By the time he get to college, he gonna understand. You get up in the morning, you have your meeting, you have your breakfast, you get on the bus, you better be on time. Don't be late. That's right. Go to the next day, got there, do practice or whatever case might be, get back on the bus, get back home, do preparation, do recovery, right. eat, training, back at it again. That's right. That journey gonna be there to guide you all the way through. The reason I know, cause I did the same thing with my boys. It, I got to the point where when we go to the hotel, I put tape on the door. Yeah. No, if they come out. <laughs> Can they come out come out that door? Oh, you ain't playing. Mm-hmm. So it is it but it's it's not a free for all. Mm-hmm. If it's free for all, then you that's a vacation. Right. If you did the way that BJ did on that bus, then it would take care of business. Mm-hmm. Right now everything is business. But my question is, when do we have fun? So a lot of time what we try to do is too when we have all these camps and all that, that's why I was so thankful. The one camp that he didn't get to participate in, we kind of got to break away for mm-hmm. a little bit. He a, he a shoe guy. So a lot of times what I do, maybe he can't go, but I'll find a little outlet. i send him, hey, man, I, you, know, you like these? And that's just like a, a breakaway because that's the things he's into. Um, a lot of times, some days I'll be like, bro, we're not training today. You know, or whatever, you know, go mm-hmm. go be a kid or mm-hmm. or whatever. But it's balance. Right. It's balance, right. you know. So I'm I'm always trying to keep that front of mind. Or my wife will check me sometimes, like, hey, you might be doing a little too much now. Mm-hmm. Let, let him let him let him let he is a kid, he's thirteen. <laughs> and I'm like, eh, my the man right. in me is like, uh, and then I'm like, all right, you right. Cause, Cause you know now, you know, we can't rush life. That's right. You gotta let it flow and let it go. That's right. Because when they get to college, they up from five to eleven o'clock working every day. That's a lot. Mm-hmm. I remember even when my son played at Notre Dame. After the game, he still 
By the time he got back that morning, I'm going to go to breakfast. Oh, no, no, no. I got to go to rehab. Well, I got to go here. About that? Yeah, we're I'm like, I said, man, let's go eat some pancakes That's up in right. here, you know? They call them flapjacks up there. I think no damn, they're big. <laughs> so, like, so I'm like, Dude, we're going to go eat. Like, nah, man, uh uh-uh. yeah, Before well, the game, you got, pra- you got lifts. The game, then after the game, right. you got lift, then recovery. Right. Then, you know. Most people fail because they cannot prepare for it. They can't sure. handle it. They're not ready for it. Yep. So you are already doing the right thing by preparing him, you know, for that next level. Mm-hmm. And that's where people sometimes overdo it. Right, right. Sometimes yeah. they overdo that, You're right? You're right. I, I'm still trying to figure out why people have, you know, 18 trainers and all the. I'm like, what are we doing? Now, yeah. and listen, I might, this, listen, I keep it straight. Right. I'm not a fan of it. I got you. It's a lot. I'm not a fan of it. I'm a fan. My training is two days a week, mm-hmm. right? And then Saturday you can do a camp. The off day you do your off training or whatever. But they still have to be a kid. They still have to be able to enjoy it, right? Because you don't want to lose the love for it. And the body, the young, the right. body need rest. Right. And we have to understand that as parents, as coach, as trainer. But at the same time, we do have to understand that if we're not seen, mm-hmm. we're not going to get recognized. That's right. We have to be seen at the same time. So we have to definitely be that balance. Correct. And I think you got to definitely uh, put a well balance together. You know? And what even better than that there, I know I just got, you know, you and, and, and I'm, I'm going to change my, I'm going to change it. Uh, B-Max. B-Max, there you go. You get yeah, it right. I'm going to change that. <laughs> I got B-Max, right? So at the same time, one of the other hardest challenges is just having take you off my show mm-hmm. and bring on mother on the show. Got you. So now, you know, that whole dynamic changes because Absolutely. there's no dad, it's just mother and son. That's right. So now that, that, that's a different challenge and it's tougher out it there. Is. You are blessed to have mom and dad. Yes, sir. Right. That's, 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 that's a recipe for success mm-hmm. within itself. So you have that, right? Of course, we've got God on our side. Right. Then we have the determine and the hard work to be the best, to be the greatest, right? Yes, to go sir. to the NFL. But understand that NFL is a dream, a college degree is reality. Yes, we sir. can't never forget that part right there. Because once you start switching that around, that's when things don't go the way they need to go. That's and right. and what, what makes that switch around is the money. That's right. So we can't let the money control us. We got to control the money. We always got to make sure that we understand the, the ultimate purpose. The ultimate purpose, the ultimate goal is to make sure that everything that we have done, all the hard work, is going to be rewarded for it. Mm-hmm. And we ain't nothing like walking across that stage with a college degree. That's right. Yes, That's sir. Right. I mean, that you talking about a proud moment? It's crazy. And what even make, make it better than that is, is the way it looks, you going to be getting money in high school now, so it ain't about, oh, I made the NFL, I got you all this money. Rush. You ain't got to rush. You ain't got to rush no more. Yes, sir. Think about it. Look at the, uh, the Deion Sanders son. Mm-hmm. He making more money than the guys on the NFL. You're right. And he in college. You're right. So that's a whole nother task there. Now, I know y'all dealing with a lot with the youth sports and a lot of change and a lot of things going different ain't the same anymore. Mm -hmm. We know the games are different. You know, the expectations are different. The coaching style is different. But you able to stay level-headed. The close the show update, tell us, BJ, how you able to stay level-headed and that, how you able to stay level-headed with how things going in youth sports. You want to go? Let you go first. Well, it's not. It's not hard to not stay level-headed. I mean, as a quarterback, you stay even kill already. So it's kind of normal to be going with one thing happening and another thing happening, and it's just tearing you between the two. But it's it's kind of normal just to stay even kill. I have to remember in the game I have to stay even kill as well. If, even if I have something that went wrong, I have to get back on track. I got it. Dad, what's, your, what's your thoughts on that there? Because a lot of changes. So how do we say prayer, love ahead? Because a lot, it's hard. A, lot, a lot of prayer, a lot of fasting, a lot of pillow talk with the wife. You know, <laughs> we talking and, 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 and having a sounding board to, you know, to vent sometimes. People like yourself, I come and talk to Coach, tell me what, the, and having real people around you. Mm-hmm. Not people that tell you what you want to hear, but tell you what you need to hear. Because sometimes you can think you're right, you know, and, and I've asked some people that, that I've got into it with, but they, you know, I looked at it from their perspective. I'm like, dang, they right. You know, you know, Checking yourself, being accountable, because mm-hmm. we're not always right. And we made mistakes in this journey. We still probably going to make mistakes, but trial and error and having a circle, having a close-knit circle of people that you can confide in and people that hold you accountable. I think that's what helps. Well, I like it. I think, I think we made some magic right here. But yes, sir. Right, like they say, you know, you know, to make magic, you know, you got to do the work. That's right. Like I say, some people want the magic, but don't want to do the work. And y'all heard it right here on the Listen to Low show. 
You had it right here, live, right? Two ears, one mouth. We had Braylon Cave Sr. and we had Braylon Cave Jr., a.k.a. B-Max, <laughs> yes, right? Sir. One of the top quarterbacks in the country. Y'all, the brand is there. You see the brand on the chest. Philippians 413, right there. Y'all make sure y'all recognize the brand, be part of the brand, you know, and, and follow the brand. The brand going to do something very, very shocking. So stay tuned. Love A lot it. of great things going on. You yes, on sir. Listen to Low. Make sure you like us, share it, subscribe. Camp King, one, two, with a K. K for kids. See y'all next time. Yes, sir.